Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for December 4th, 2020. It is Friday, and this is the new Friday. This is the CKA Study Fridays. That's right. I am starting to study for the Certified Kubernetes Administrator Exam. I'm planning to take it on January 22nd. That's how I've boxed myself or painted myself into a corner now. I've, I've set a date. I've actually scheduled the exam. And now let's study for it. Now, I already did a video about like the idea behind studying for it. So I'll throw a link for that. But before we get into that, I just want to check in with you and see how you're doing. How's it going? How's Friday? You made it. You made it to Friday. Good for you. It's it's raining outside for me. I woke up this morning and I was like, man, I'm not going to get a run in today. Uh, the kids have a half day. I have all this work to do. And then after yesterday being so difficult, I got to tell you, today was awesome. I got all my work done early. Everything finished right. I was able to go out for a run before the kids got home from early dismissal. It was just like things were firing on all cylinders today. And you got to love it when you end a week that way. I am just, I'm feeling good. I hope you're feeling good. I hope your week, even if it was kind of rocky at the beginning or through the entire week until Friday, I hope that it kind of ended well. So we'll just leave it at that. And we'll talk about today's topic, which is studying for the Kubernetes Certified Administrator exam. So here's my approach. This is the way that I'm going about it. I've already written a study guide for uh, for Terraform, and that's available on LeanPub. And I'm working through a certification guide for Vault, which is also on LeanPub right now. Now, I'm not going to publish, or at least I'm not planning to publish a certification guide for Kubernetes because I'm not super knowledgeable about it. But maybe that's perfect because we're going to learn together. I know enough to be dangerous. I don't know enough to be an administrator. How far can I get on this thing? And my idea was, well, since I'm used to writing study guides, I've kind of been in that vein. Why don't I start by writing a study guide for myself and just like an open source study guide for Kubernetes. And where am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that on GitHub because of course that's where I'm doing it. And it's a public repository. You can go check it out. In fact, let's go check it out together. All right, let me go ahead and share out my screen. Here we go. This is the study guide. If you go on my GitHub repository, I'll include a link down in the description. But if you just go to Ned1313 on GitHub and look for CKA study guide, boom, there it is. And I started working on it. And basically, I'm not exactly how sure how it's going to be used or exactly what the final structure is going to be. In terms of what I'm going to be using to study, I'm going to use a combination of Docker desktop where that is applicable. Uh, if Docker desktop doesn't meet my needs, I might use something like Minikube. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I do have credits on Microsoft Azure, so I can use AKS to spin up nodes there, or I can spin up virtual machines there and install Kubernetes directly. Or I could try to do like Kubernetes the hard way on Azure just to get a feeling for it. But that's that's how I'm going to study. I've got kubectl installed and I've got Helm installed, and I feel like that's pretty much all I'm going to need in terms of an operating system. I work on Windows, but I use Windows subsystem for Linux. So that's what I'm going to be using for my exercises. And that's my idea. In terms of branching strategy, I have main locked. So I have to create a branch and then merge it into main if I want to. And right now, I'm just going to create a branch for each objective, basically. And then once I finish an objective, I will merge that into main and move on to the next objective. So that's those are my thoughts. So the more finished product should live in main and the work in progress is going to be in one of the other branches. And I'm currently on one of those other branches I just called objectives because I'm just starting to set this stuff up. Let's look at what I put in objectives. Okay, in objectives, I started with an overview document. The overview is like an overview of what's in the exam, right? Because that's something I need to know and you need to know too. And I'm Instead of just copying and pasting this stuff, I actually typed this all out. Why did I do that? The reason I typed it out is because when I write stuff down or type it out, I retain the information better. So I'm going to under remember what the domains are better if I type them out here in a table. And that's exactly what I did. So I typed out the table of the five different domains that are involved in the certification. And typically, I would call these sort of a, not even objectives, but like objective terminal objectives or something. So we've got cluster architecture installation and config. That's 25%. 
Workloads and scheduling is 15. Services and networking is 20. Storage is 10%. And troubleshooting is 30%. The biggest area is troubleshooting. So I know where my primary focus should be. But the thing is, you can't really be effective at troubleshooting unless you understand most of the rest of the stuff that's in there. So really what I need to do is focus on the areas that I'm weakest. Okay, so these are the different domains. And I also included links for the things that you'll have access to when you're taking the exam. So I should rely on these heavily when I'm studying stuff like the Kubernetes doc, the Kubernetes GitHub and the Kubernetes blog. Those are available to you while you're taking the exam. So why not take advantage of them now? The curriculum is available on GitHub. Right now they're using version 1.19. I hope that's still what it is on January 22nd because that's what I'm studying towards. And in the curriculum, they break down under each domain what objectives you need to know under that domain. And I'm not going to go over all of them right now. You can go, you can read them. But I did type them out here myself, again, so I can better retain and remember the things. And the first one, the very first objective, boom, manage role-based access control. Well, I kind of know some stuff about role-based access control, but that's definitely something that I need to study up on more. And... I actually think the second objective, using cube admin to install basic cluster, is going to teach me a lot about the structure of a basic Kubernetes cluster. But I'm going to start with RBAC because I feel like if I already know a little bit about something, it's easier to get started with it. And that's exactly what I did. If we go up and look at the next document here, cluster architecture is for the high level domain of cluster architecture installation and configuration. I listed the objectives again, and then I'm doing a section per objective, manage RBAC. What does that mean? Well, I know that <laughs> there's roles, role bindings, cluster roles, and cluster role bindings. And I included service accounts in here, but that's actually not necessarily part of RBAC, but I threw it in here because that's what I knew about. So I kind of wanted to level set with myself. What am I aware of today? I'm aware of these things. But then I started reading through the documentation and oh, okay. so. In terms of the flow through Kubernetes, the API, it goes through authentication. That's the first portion, or also known as AuthN. Then authorization, often referred to as AuthZ, and then admission control. Oh, that's interesting. So then I read a little bit about authentication, authorization, and admission control in terms of Kubernetes and wrote that stuff down here, summarized in my own words, again, so I can better remember and understand what I just read. The other thing I really need to do is get is start doing this stuff at the keyboard and go through an exercise where I try to implement some of the information that I'm learning. Now this focuses on RBAC. So there's three different authorizations that they referenced ABAC, RBAC and webhook. The thing that we're focused on for the exam is RBAC. So then I created a section for RBAC. Okay. And I was right, there are four different objects in the API for RBAC. So that's good to know. And then I started defining out each of those four objects. I started with role and that's where I stopped. That's as far as I've gotten. I've defined out some information about role and even this is not done. But again, I'm trying to include information about each object here and then break it down a little bit more and include links back to the Kubernetes documentation so I can quick reference it when I'm studying later. And my idea is at the end of this, maybe I can write like a quick little summary for each of these high level things like manage RBAC. At the end, maybe I can write a little quick summary down here at the end of that section, key points to remember about that. And then I also want to create some uh, code examples for myself. So that's where we get into if we look in VS code where I'm creating this, we can see there's a folder over here called code. That's where I'm going to start putting code examples because I don't have anything in there. That directory doesn't show up in GitHub because GitHub won't copy an empty directory. There's nothing committed there. Uh, because in its world files, uh, well, directories are just really a file path. So Anyway, so that is basically my plan is I'm going to start working through these. I'll start by documenting out the objective. Once I have the objective objective documented out, then I'm going to come up with some code examples for myself to force myself to implement what I see in the objective. And then I'll move on to the next objective. And I'm just going to kind of roll through that for each of the domains 
documenting it in this. So like I said, if you want to follow along, I'll include a link down in the description to the GitHub repository that I'm working on. If you want to fork it and send a pull request, by all means do. Just remember, this is a work in progress. You probably want to fork off of main and add your own stuff in, and then we'll merge it together. We'll figure it out a way if you want to work with me on this. Uh, but for me, the biggest part is actually writing this stuff out because that helps me retain what I'm doing. And then the second half of that is to come up with the code examples and then go through those in a Kubernetes environment to really like cement things home for me. So that's that's my plan. This is how far I've gotten this week, which is not a lot, but hopefully next week I'll have a whole bunch more. And maybe we can walk through some of those code examples that I have created for my own studying purposes. That's all I have for today. And, uh, and you know, until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.